Welcome back guys, thank you so much for watching. Tonight we're looking at severe weather events so far this year. Please remember to give that video a quick like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thousands evacuated as Storm Kristoff hit Manchester, Wales and Merseyside. Hundreds of people were told to leave their homes overnight as Storm Kristoff caused widespread flooding across the UK. Some 2,000 properties in the East Disbury, West Disbury, and North Den areas of Greater Manchester were ordered evacuated on Wednesday night because of rising water levels, the City Council said. People were also asked to leave their homes in parts of Ruthin and Bangor on Dee in North Wales and Meghall in Merseyside. Guy is probably going to laugh at me for mis mispronouncing all these English towns, but I'm doing my best, laddie. It comes as heavy rain and snow continued to fall across England and Wales, with many rivers at dangerously high levels, according to the Environmental Agency. Four severe flood warnings for danger to life were issued by the agency for the River Mersai at Didsbury and Northern Den and in Meghall. A fifth was issued by Natural Resources Wales for Bangor and D. Boris Johnson, the handsome looking fellow that he is, early urged people to heed the flood warnings and evacuate their properties when told to do so. The Lib Dem councillor Richard Kilpatrick said he was among those who had to evacuate overnight after police came knocking on doors in the beaches in Didsbury with the local mosque opening its doors. He told Manchester Evening News, The atmosphere has been a mixture of anxiety and disbelief, I think. I helped door knocking to inform residents. Ex-tropical cyclone Kimmy still a risk as emergency services warn a potential flooding. Severe weather still a risk for Queensland. According to the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, ex-tropical cyclone Kimmy has weakened to a tropical low off North Queensland, but emergency services are warning people that the storm is still packing very strong winds and could bring flooding. Coastal residents have been spared the worst after the cyclone weakened from a Category 2 system to a storm, sitting 135 kilometers north of Townsville on Tuesday morning. The Bureau of Meteorology said the system still had wind gusts of up to 95 km per hour and would bring heavy downpours to the region between Innsfell and Bowen on Tuesday and Wednesday. The Queensland Fire and Emergency Services Commissioner John Bolger said ex-tropical cyclone Kimmy still posed a risk and people should remain vigilant. XTC Kimmy, I guess that stands for Tropical Cyclone, <laughs> is now a tropical low, sitting just off Townsville, so while our coastal crossing is highly unlikely near, we're still well within a severe weather event, very strong winds and a lot of heavy rain, so that flash flooding and general flooding warning remains in place, he told a 7 Sunrise program. So we ask people to remain vigilant, and can I just please stress to people that if it's flooded, forget it. Don't go back for your things and risk your life, guys. If it's flooded, just go. We still have emergency response crews in place south from Ka Karens, C-A-I-R-N-S, Karens, and north from Townsville. So the emergency still exists. While we're not dealing with a tropical cyclone, we're still in a very dangerous weather pattern, he says. Bolger said swift water rescue crews, helicopters, and flood boats were still standing by to deal with any flood rescues. Western Australia seeks federal disaster relief after floods follow devastating fires. Wind gusts of up to 100 km an hour recorded and rainfall up to 100 mm possible after bushfires destroyed 86 homes in Perth Hills. Dan Palid, AAP, the Western Australian government, will seek federal disaster relief to help fast-track road repairs after floods in the state's northwest. With a flood warning in place for the Midwest, Gascon, Gascon, Gascon region, on Sunday, lad, roads remain closed and residents were urged to watch for fast-flowing and rising waters. All my friends from the UK are going to be laughing at me as I pronounce these towns. 
The premier Mark McGrone, Mark McGoran, Mark McGowan, good old Scottish name, Mark McGowan, said the tropical low pressure system sweeping across the state had caused considerable damage, including to the Northwest Coastal Highway. He said some closures were likely to remain in place for several weeks, but authorities were already working to open the highway as soon as possible. It's funny how the world just must go on. Hey guys, it doesn't matter what's going on, how bad the storms are, like everything just must go on. Highways must open as soon as possible. Roads must open as soon as possible. Life just goes on regardless. Pretty resilient race of people we are. Road building crews are ready to deploy as soon as flood levels recede sufficiently to make an on the ground assessment of the damage, he said. Heavy rains and strong winds were also expected to hit Perth and parts of the state's southwest on Sunday and into Monday as the low moved down the coast. A severe weather warning was in place for the southwest, lower southwest, and great southern districts. Call of the Rewild, releasing Britain's rivers to ease flooding. For many of us across the UK, it has felt like another wet winter. I guess I should say for many of you across the UK because I don't live there. Yet again, homes have flooded and politicians are under pressure to improve flood protection. Engineering our rivers and building defenses might bring reassurance, but recent research shows that doing nothing is often more effective at reducing flooding. That's weird. Doing nothing, eh? Huh. George Heritage and Neil Ettenwhistle from the University of Salford studied the river Caldu in Cumbria, responsible for three major floods in Carcile since 2010. Do you know what's funny? I always found out about you guys in England is you say the river things like backwards. Like, for example, like the River Thames, is it called? The one, or the River Thames that runs through London? You guys would call it the River Thames. Well, here we'd just call it Thames River. Just like uh, the Nile. You'd just call it um, the Nile River. We'd call it the Nile River, but you guys would call it the River Nile. Do you understand how you say it backwards? Like, we have a river in Canada, it's a huge river, it's called the Fraser River. If it was in England, you guys would call it the River Fraser. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Anyway, the results published in the journal uh, Water, the journal called Water, show that the straightening, deepening, and widening of the river has increased the rate at which sediment whooshes downstream, dumping its load <laughs> in the Carlisle and increasing the chances of overflow there dumping its load, eh? But where this upstream river maintenance has been relaxed, they found the river has reverted to wandering, depositing more sediment upstream and reducing the clogging up in Car Carlisle. And the river Codwell is no exception. I love England, I really do. My family's from there, my mom was born there. It's such a beautiful country, it's so green and lush. I, I just really do love the UK. The same debate is being played out in New Zealand, where scientists are arguing for the rewilding of rivers, giving them space to move. Confining rivers has created valuable agricultural land like that seen on the Canterbury, Canterbury Plains, and has, become, has come at a cost of increased flood risk downstream. It's time to release our rivers. MET office warns of ice, flooding, and snow in the next few days across the UK. England has 80 flood warnings, Wales 6 alerts, with rain and snow widely forecast. I don't know, what's the difference between England and Wales? Isn't it just like a part of England? I don't, I don't get it. Is Wales a province in England or something? Like we have provinces here? Maybe someone from the UK like I could explain that. Wild weather over the weekend that brought sub-zero temperatures, storms, flooding, and widespread icy conditions looks set to continue into the early part of the week in some areas of the UK. By Sunday evening, there were 80 flood warnings in place for England and 6 flood alerts across Wales. The MET office, I'm guessing MET is an acronym for some kind of English meteorological something. Uh, the MET office issued a yellow warning for ice and snow in Orkney and Shetland. Shetland. Well, much of Wales saw ice and snow. Wet and snowy weather is forecast for much of the country into the middle of the week. 
The warnings come as new government proposals could entitle homeowners in flood-hit areas to discounted insurance premiums if they install flood protection measures. Plans under consultation could also allow insured householders able to claim money to cover the damage and make their homes more resilient. England's a pretty rich, wealthy nation. It would not be pretty nice to live there. Uh, they, I'm pretty sure they have some of the best healthcare on the planet there. Even, it even beats Canada as far as like their free healthcare system goes in England. I heard it's, it's impeccable. On Saturday, Ch Chesil Beach on the side of Portland in Dorset was hit by storms that breached sea defenses, leading the Environment Agency to issue a flood warning for the area and warn people to take care along beaches and coastal footpaths. In Tweaksbury, 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 Glo Gloucester, Gloucestershire, Glu Gloucest, Gloucestershire. <laughs> I love those names. A children's playground was partially submerged while in Henley on Thames in Oxfordshire, water rose up the towpath along the river. It's so neat there, eh? It sounds like the Middle Earth or something. This week, more snow is likely across north, northern England, parts of Wales and Scotland, with up to 5 centimeters of snow likely at lower levels and up to 10 centimeters on higher ground. After a cold but settled day on Monday, the Met Office is predicting a heavier band of rain to arrive overnight on Monday across a swath of the UK from the south and west, said Met Office meteorologist Luke Molly. And on top of all this news about flooding, guys, the UN is warning that most will people will live downstream of aging large dams by 2050. Yay, that sounds great. A global study calls on governments to step up maintenance efforts to prevent failures overtopping dams or leaks. By 2050, most people will live downstream of a large dam built in the 20th century, many of which are approaching the limits of useful lifetime. They were designed for according to global research. To avoid the potential for dam failures overtopping or leaks. The dams will require increasing maintenance and some may have to be taken out of service. Many governments have not prepared for these needs, warned the authors of a study by the United Nations University. The volume of water stored behind large dams is estimated to be 7,000 to 8,300 cubic kilometers or enough to cover 80% of Canada's land mass in a meter of water? What? That's insane. Canada's like the second biggest country in the world or something. Good maintenance can ensure a well-designed dam can last for 100 years without problem. But many of today's large dams were built long before the risks of climate crisis became clear. Changing rainfall patterns and more extreme weather events have been putting dams under strains that were not envisioned by their designers, said Vladimir Smakatin, director of UNU's Institute for Water, uh, Environment and Health in Canada, and co-author of the study. The rising frequency and severity of flooding and other extreme environmental events can overwhelm a dam's design limits and accelerate a dam's aging process, he said. Makes sense. Dam failure risks the life of people living downstream and aging dams should be investigated to access the threat, but large-scale failures were likely to remain rare, the authors of the paper told The Guardian. A more likely threat is that even without major accidents, countries dependent on large dams uh, as reservoirs and for hydroelectricity may face problems if the dams are not adequately maintained to cope with climatic changes. This is an emerging risk, said Smukathin. There's no immediate catastrophe at a global level, but there are 60,000 large dams spread around the world, and they all are not getting any younger. The climate crisis meant large dams across the world should be reassessed, said Dumindia Perura, a senior researcher at the Institute and lead author of the study. 
big floods and rainfall changes may be beyond the capacity of these structures and may cause a higher risk of collapse, he said. One common issue is that more intense rainfall can cause upstream erosion of water courses, and flood increases the debris and silt flowing into dams, causing a buildup of sediment. Most of the world's large dams are concentrated in one small number of countries. Nine out of ten are located within 25 countries. China has the most, with nearly 24,000 large dams, while many more are found in India, Japan, and South Korea. Nearly half of the world's river volume is already affected by dams, and most existing large dams were built between 1930 and 1970, with an expected life expectancy of 50 to 100 years. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and turn your notifications on. Hey, and I hope you guys noticed that my audio sounds a lot better, a lot clearer. I sure hope it does because I spent like $150 on this microphone, so I hope it's worth it. It's something I'm going to use for a long time, so that's how I justified buying it. It's like the main tool I use for my job, so hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully it sounds better. I've already been told that it sounds a whole lot better, so that's good. So please leave a comment down below, guys. Please stay safe, and God bless you and your family.